I looked online for uh, remedies to panic attacks the other day. Um, the first results seem promising. How to stop a panic attack in 11 steps. Um, thank you, Google. I was looking for a way to make this experience last a bit longer. And besides, it's more remedies per panic attack? I mean, that's just good economics. But I nailed step one. Step one. Recognize that you are having a panic attack. <laughs> Check. But then the next one started to get a little more advanced. Like, keep fresh lavender on hand. <laughs> I was so ready to have a fistful of lavender and skip around DC like some child on Little House on the Prairie. But the panic attacks kept coming, so I skipped straight ahead to 11. <laughs> Step 11, take Xanax. <laughs> you could have made that step one and skipped the bullshit. <laughs> step one, take Xanax. Step two, cool. <laughs> so much wasted time and energy. So many wasted nights stealing lavender from my neighbor's garden. <laughs> I feel like anyone in DC has co probably considered a Xanax prescription at one point or another. I mean, living through all this political drama makes me feel like I'm the parent who made the mistake of letting their kids cook Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> I mean, I, I think of the kids as like the branches of government and then ingredients and spices and what they do in the kitchen as uh, policy and decisions. So, first we have the executive branch, your oldest kid. Let's call him something, you know, not completely obvious, like Ronald. <laughs> he thinks he's running the show, but really he's just as clueless as the rest of the kids. Then you have the twins, the Houses of Congress. Let's give them some um, wholesome American names, like Mitch or Nancy. <laughs> They're both cooking the same dish tonight off of two different recipes and keep stealing ingredients from one another. <laughs> then you have your spouse, the Supreme Court, who's just kind of smugly sitting by and watching this all unfold. <laughs> and finally, we have you, the weary public. You just wanted to break this Thanksgiving, so you let them cook. What could go wrong? Well, things start off easy enough. Mitch sprinkles a little bit of cayenne pepper on the mashed potatoes, and you're like, cayenne, really? I wouldn't do it, but bold. <laughs> Next, Ron is stirring the stuffing, mixing the stuffing, and then you see him pull a box of Fruit Loops off the top of the refrigerator. <laughs> Starts dumping it into the mix, and you're like, oh, oh no. <laughs> Nancy sees him do this and then marches to the middle of the room and starts shouting about how he's ruining dinner. <laughs> and this is all super entertaining for you until the realization hits you. You're gonna have to eat what they're cooking. <laughs> so naturally you wanna step in, but then you're stopped at the doorway by your spouse. It's like, honey, we agreed to let them handle it this year. <laughs> you can cook next November. <laughs> Defeated, you skulk off to the couch where you crack open a box of Costco wine and start watching Netflix with grandma. <laughs> but it's not long before your curiosity gets the best of you. You peek your head in the kitchen Ron has burned the stuffing. Flames are shooting out of the oven. Mitch and Nancy are dueling with turkey basters. And your spouse is sitting there going, hey, this was your idea. And you're just, you're over it. You're so over it. And you walk out the front door with a box of wine in hand. But you stop. You stop and you turn around and as smoke pours from the window, you realize Grandma is still asleep on the couch. And all your stuff is in there. But you know what? You turn your mood around. You say, 
I have alcohol. I have Netflix on my phone. And I am fairly certain that's how grandma wanted to go out. Thank you all, this is my time, you've been great.